are seeing what happens at a firehouse when an alarm comes in. All that is known so far is that a fire has started and its general location. Organized society, that is you, the taxpayers, are throwing at the fire your Sunday punch. And it's a pretty good punch. Your equipment is modern and mobile. Your firemen are trained and courageous. Every time they go out, they know they may give their lives trying to save your life or your property. Unfortunately, it's an uneven battle they go into in a war that never ends. Now we're going to meet one of the general staff commanding our forces, Chief Walker. If we only knew where fire was going to break next, we'd be there waiting for it. Usually, we're only minutes away, but those are the minutes that count most. Because the extent of loss depends upon what happens in the first five minutes. Fires start in many ways. Defective wiring, spontaneous ignition, careless smoking. But one thing most of them have in common. They start small. Big fires are only small fires that have had time to grow. And it doesn't take long. All buildings, even fire-resistive buildings, often miscalled fireproof, hold plenty of flammable material. Until you've experienced it, you just can't realize how fast a fire can spread. Even a minor blaze can triple its size in 60 seconds. In another minute or two, it can increase tenfold. And 10 minutes after it starts, a fire can easily be 100 times its original size. When this happens, you just have to watch them burn and try to protect other buildings nearby. That's the reason that the first five minutes are worth more than the next five hours. One trouble is, many commercial and industrial buildings are closed up to 70% of the time, counting nights, weekends, and holidays. So the blaze isn't discovered till it has gotten a head start. Even with a watchman or guard on duty, he can't be everywhere at once. And even when people are around, there is no guarantee they'll do the right thing. There's something about a fire that panics people. Sometimes they try to fight it themselves and don't call us until the blaze gets out of hand. Or they waste time looking for a fire alarm box. Or on the telephone, they get excited, give us incomplete information, and hang up. Those are some of the reasons why fire losses in this country run more than a billion dollars a year, and why fire kills around 11,000 of our fellow citizens every year. But now we come to the brighter side of the picture. Bad as our losses are, it would be many times worse were it not for modern science. A combination of ingenious devices stands guard over all types of property today. You all know what this is, an automatic sprinkler. You've seen them on pipes running along ceilings. But not many people know about the rest of the system. The minute one of these goes off, it does two important things at once. It starts fighting the fire by itself, and it hollers for help. Oh, unquestionably, the automatic sprinkler system is a tremendously valuable defense against fire. When it is working properly, a sprinkler system acts fast and effectively in those vital first five minutes. But the human element can rob the sprinkler of its powerful punch. The sprinkler can be crippled, or it can be put out of commission altogether if a shutoff valve is carelessly or maliciously closed if the water level is too low in gravity or pressure tanks, or the air pressure in pressure tanks is too low, if the water in a gravity tank is frozen in a cold wave, if the steam pressure to engine-driven pumps is subnormal, or if the electric power to fire pumps has failed. Even though the sprinkler system is capable of full operation, someone has to hear the gong and call the fire department because the water must be shut off after the fire is out, but not until the fire is out. But modern science has perfected a way to make sure that all supply units of a sprinkler system are always ready to operate, and that trained alert men will instantly take action the minute water starts flowing. This is an ADT central station. When this service is added, the moment the first sprinkler goes off, a red light flashes a warning sound. The operator reads the signal on the tape. Fire. 
from the code, the assignment book instantly shows the exact address, even the area of the property from which the alarm has come. This advantage alone saves precious moments. The code transmitter notifies the fire department of the fire and its location. With this information, we know at once what type of equipment will be needed at that property. And in a matter of seconds, it's on its way. Simultaneously, an ADT guard is also en route. The subscriber is notified at the premises. If it's night, a weekend, or a holiday, ADT notifies him at home. In a case like this, we have a first-rate chance of getting to the fire in time. And we have a chance to keep the losses low, both in life and property. But Chief Walker, suppose the sprinkler system doesn't work for some reason. Suppose it's turned off, or there's some other malfunction. Well, under the complete protection system, the minute the water supply in the pipes is cut off or reduced, that is reported instantly, and ADT investigates immediately and follows through with it until normal conditions are restored. I see. As a matter of fact, I remember an instance where an arsonist was trying to set fire to a building. He knew the sprinkler system would give the alarm, so he shut off the water, not knowing that that turned in an automatic warning just the same. He was just starting his fire when they caught it, and him too. That's a good one. But aren't there places where sprinkler systems are not installed for some reason? Oh, yes. Of course, such places need a way to detect fire and transmit an alarm even more. For them, there are various automatic fire alarm systems. Uh, one of these is the Aero system. It is a simple circuit of very small diameter copper tubing, which runs along the ceiling. The tubing contains air that expands on any rapid rise in temperature. That sends an instant alarm into the ADT central station. There are still other types, of course engineered according to the kind of building and its particular hazards, such as the teletherm system, which converts the radiant heat of the fire into electrical energy and actuates the alarm. Or, for places where heat fluctuations are common, they have a special thermostat that actually can tell the difference between a friendly fire and an unfriendly one. No. Oh, yes. They even have one unit that can see smoke. It goes in an air duct, or in high-value spots, such as fur storage vaults. Now, in the completely protected property today, often a small wastebasket fire automatically has the fire department on the scene. More than once, we've arrived in answer to an ADT call before the people who were working there knew their place was burning. Well, that must be a shock to find the fire department putting out a fire they didn't know they had. Yes. But it's a wonderful feeling of security for the property owner. And we're for anything that helps us do our job better. Like, uh, such a simple thing as private fire alarm boxes. Private alarm boxes? Why, oh, yes. They are manually operated, same as the public boxes. But they are strategically located right on the property. They give the exact address of the fire, not just the general neighborhood. Well, that gives me an idea. Yes, Mr. Malico? Why couldn't the firm buy these different gadgets direct? Make up their own electric protective system. Train their own men to operate it. Well, even if all the equipment was made by the same manufacturer, they would be undertaking considerable expense for a retail operation that ADT does on a wholesale basis, providing both economy and efficiency. And the first time they really needed it, they might find that their protection system had fallen down in some vital part through, uh, inexperience, neglect, or a change in personnel. Take one item alone, first-class maintenance. Without it, the system becomes worse than useless, because you will be relying on something that may fail right when you need it, simply from oversight or neglect. Your maintenance staff may have a hundred other gadgets to maintain. ADT has no job more important than maintaining the protection service on your premises. That's more important to you than devices, wire, or conduit. Even in remote locations, ADT provides service to several thousand communities throughout the United States and through affiliates in Canada. 63,000 subscribers and property protected in excess of $53 billion can't be wrong. I'll go along with that. Yes, modern science, in this case through ADT, 
has given us real protection that saves property and frequently lives by giving the fire department a chance to get there in that vital first five minutes. Thank you, Chief Walker. Of course, there are establishments that still don't have automatic protection. But in the thousands of communities from coast to coast where it is available, subscribers appreciate the feeling of security it gives them. The immunity not only from tangible losses, but also from intangible losses, such as the preservation of the business, continuity of customer relations and employees' jobs, and irreplaceable records. And in a great many cases, ADT saves them money, too. Very often, automatic protection service cuts the cost of insurance. And usually, guards and watchmen can be replaced by a combination of fire and burglary protection systems so that they can be transferred to productive jobs. And where it is necessary, science has even developed supervisory services that watch over industrial processes that must continue unattended at night or during other closed periods. When something goes wrong, a warning signal automatically goes to the central station so that corrective action can quickly be taken. there is another serious hazard that every businessman faces constantly, and that is burglary. This, too, accounts for millions of dollars of loss nationally. That is, for places that are not sufficiently protected. For our story on that, we call on Police Chief Anderson. Chief Anderson. Now, there are several ways our problems parallel those of Fire Chief Walker. We don't know where the criminals are going to strike next until they've struck. And we, too, can do our job a lot better, can serve the public better, if we can get there within the first few minutes. And science is helping you, too? Tremendously. A moment ago, you witnessed an illegal entry. If that had been an automatically protected property, the chances are we would have had that fellow by this time. Now, naturally, the amount and type of burglar alarm service differs with the premises and conditions. But let me show you some of the ways that discourage any burglar. A chain link fence topped with barbed wire, enough to keep out casual intruders. But this man has brought wire cutters. What he doesn't know is he'll hardly get through the fence before an electronic detector starts a warning light in the ADT central station and sends out its signal of a prowler with the exact address. Operators receive and verify the signal. Transmit the alarm to the police. All units in the vicinity and 1A9. 459 silent. Nan on way. 1100 Swing Street, 1A9, code 2. And send an armed ADT guard to the scene. was even started, we converged on him. Just for the sake of illustration, let's say he got inside the fence without climbing over, going through or tunneling under. I can show you with a drawing. Now let's be a bit fantastic and say the intruder hired a helicopter to drop him inside the electronic fence. Let's pretend he somehow has reached the building outside a window. 
If he breaks that window, he flashes a signal. If he jimmies it open without breaking it, he still flashes a signal. What he doesn't realize, even as he stands there wondering what to do to avoid detection, he is flashing a signal right now. ADT already knows it. The police are already on the way. And again, the prowler betrays himself before he can even enter the building. But let's say he doesn't go near a window. What about the back door? The results are the same, no matter how he gets through that door. Automatically, unwittingly, he gives himself away. Or what about the skylight? What about digging his way through the wall? Maybe from some building next door that is not protected by ADT. Yes, you guessed it. Regardless of what way he tries to break in, his very act of trying sends in the alarm without his knowing it. The first thing he knows, boom, we've got him. Usually before he has had time to disturb anything inside. I don't mean that every establishment has all of these devices or needs them. ADT, that's the American District Telegraph Company, they've been in this business for more than 80 years. They send out a protection specialist to survey each plant and see just what is needed in the way of fire and burglary protection. They work closely with the police, with the fire department, and the underwriters. In fact, you probably know that most types of this service automatically cut the cost of burglary insurance considerably. I see why. Oh, yes. But the devices I've talked about so far, they're all designed to detect attack from the outside. The protective devices inside a building are even more amazing, if possible. Again, for the sake of argument, let's say the burglar gets inside, or has hid inside before closing time. By the time he has taken not more than three steps, he comes within range of an ultrasonic or motion detection system and ADT has got him again. Or maybe this is the type of concern having a large safe or vault that holds money, jewelry, furs, narcotics, anything easy to make off with of great value. Unfortunately, there isn't a safe or a vault made that a determined burglar can't open, given the time and the proper tools. We can't prevent him from obtaining the tools, but we can keep him from having the time. As with exterior protection, there are several ways of doing this. ADT can throw an electromagnetic field around a safe that transmits a silent alarm the moment anyone even approaches it. It's called teleapproach. Or they can surround the safe with an electrically lined cabinet. The minute anyone tries to open or cut through any part of it, that transmits an alarm to the ADT central station. Or they can install a phonet alarm system sensitive microphones in the ceiling of a vault. They instantly detect the noise of anyone trying to enter through the walls, ceiling, floor, or door, and automatically flash the alarm. Well, all I've got to say is, I don't see how a burglar can make a decent living anymore. He can't, not from a place that is automatically protected. In fact, most burglars shy away the minute they see the sign because the professionals, at least, know that they just can't beat the science of electric protection. No wonder you welcome help like that. Yes, if everyone had this automatic protection who needs it, most crooks would have to go into some other business. Huh. And there'd be far less sabotage and vandalism, too. I'll bet. Of course, these burglar alarms are turned off during the day while people are at work. Yes, and turned on when they leave. But there are other devices that are never turned off, as in a bank. Now, here is a demonstration booth that could be a teller station. We're not going to show any of the hold-up devices here for obvious reasons. But if anyone comes to this window and shows a gun, or passes a written note that says this is a stick-up, you can obey the bandit's commands. Put your hands up, put your hands down, put all the money in a paper sack, open your door, stand still, and still transmit a silent alarm without giving the slightest hint you've called for help. Now, this is how modern science is helping the forces of law and order serve the public better, saving hundreds of lives and millions of dollars annually. Because whether it's fire or burglary, this international protective organization, ADT, gets the jump on an emergency in those vital first five minutes.